let's get right into it since uh, we don't have a lot of time. But as we think of change management, I think probably the first thing you have to ask yourself is, what's the purpose? Why are we even attempting or why do we attempt to manage changes uh, with our IT service management solutions like Remedy Force? And, and in general, I think um, you know you can you can see here a definition. Now, this is not if you look up um, the the objectives and purpose of change management in your idle documentation. You're going to see something that's slightly different. But in general, I think this really covers it. We're trying to implement the required changes with minimal impact to the customer, right? At least minimal negative impact. Um, certainly, uh, we want those changes to have a positive impact. But in addition to that, we want to do that in the most cost-effective manner uh, possible. So how do we go about that? Well, for years, I've always said that um, you know this whole thing that we refer to as IT service management, it's 80% process, 20% technology. And BMC has certainly given us a tool set that's very flexible, very customizable, but we really have to have a good process to begin with. And, and if we don't, well, things don't always work out as we would hope, right? So this image really illustrates um, how, you know, very subtle things that are overlooked can really have significant consequences. Now, this house was actually designed to be built upside down, but the point is, is that um, the, the the point is, is that if we do, you know, if we do have, um, if we if we don't have a good process, it can certainly have uh, negative consequences. And in a real world scenario, I think this picture is probably more frightening and more telling. And this is actually a screenshot from a website that I took years ago. Uh, there was an airline that I'll um, re leave or remain nameless, but uh, there was an airline that they basically had implemented a new ticketing system, and uh, with that, the somewhere along the line, you know, not not for sure exactly what the reasoning behind that was, but somewhere along the line, it the the change, the implementation of that uh, application failed, and as a result, it 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 had lost, you know, the company experienced lost revenue. Customers couldn't check the status of flights, but more importantly, they couldn't book. Uh, book new flights uh, from their website. And so that certainly had many negative consequences that they had to, uh, to deal with. And, you know, again, there's a number of reasons. We've, we've all heard the stories where uh, IT implemented a change over the weekend, that Monday morning, uh, it doesn't take long before the phones start ringing off the hook and the emails start coming in, self-service tickets start uh, coming in, and it's all because there was something that may have been overlooked in the change process uh, when, when, when that change was implemented. And so those are all things that we want to avoid and is really one of the primary reasons that we should and, and do have change processes in place. So specifically, how does Remedy Force help an organization better their change process, better the implementation of changes? And um, so let's talk about a few of those before we jump into the live product demonstration. One of which is communication. Uh, it, it's absolutely important to have good communication and communication not only with your staff but also your customers and so if we are implementing a change we need to convey that to our customers so that they're aware of it uh, especially if it's changing the functionality or behavior of the service uh, in addition to that, we need to communicate those changes to our staff, especially groups like the service desk. If, if the network team is making a significant change, it is important that the service desk is aware of that so they can be on their toes for, for calls that may come in that as a result of that change. Again, that's the, the least desirable scenario, but certainly is something that uh, should be taken into, into account. 
So um, certainly we have the ability um, with identifying service models and so forth of understanding who our customers are, and we also have means of doing automated notifications uh, to keep people informed of, of upcoming and in, in, in changes that, um, that may have already occurred. In addition, um, reducing failures, uh, reduce failures that are caused by changes that we have in our organization. So again, really the focus here is quality. Well, how do we do that? Uh, one of the key things is if we have standard changes, changes that we make on a regular basis, uh, the risk is minimal, um, we can create templates so that we ins are ensured that a standard process is followed for that change. So um, things like doing our risk and impact analysis, making sure that we're assessing the change up front, have the proper test plans in place, and have good planning procedures in place. Those are all things that will help and increase the quality of, of any changes that we might have implemented. In addition, um, many, many customers are under regulatory they're responsible for regulatory compliance, whether it be PCI, uh, HIPAA, whatever the case may be. And again, we need to have uh, repeatable, you know, any, any, any uh, audit organization that comes in, one of the things that they're going to be concerned with is, one, is the process repeatable? So that kind of uh, goes back to that second bullet point. But is the process repeatable, and can we um, can we you know illustrate that and and have proof of that? And then in addition to that, having uh, the necessary approvals in place. So there again, there's some components within Remedy Force that can help us with regulatory compliance and and making sure that those audits are successful. And if you are an organization that you know, may be some considered to be somewhat immature in terms of your change process, um, one of the things that Remedy Force does provide is out-of-the-box processes that uh, at least would be a good start uh, to in terms of documenting what your change process is and implementing that change process. Um, the, that is through the alignability process model, which BMC includes with Remedy Force. And the value to, to that is, is that these are change processes that are, were not designed necessarily by an idle expert at BMC. These were processes that have evolved over years and years and many implementations. So what we find is that these are real-world implementations for change processes that you know, customers have, are working with, have worked with, and have been successful with. So again, here's some things that we're going to cover in this, the next uh, uh, half hour, I guess, well, actually the next 15 minutes or so as we take a look at the product. So with that, uh, enough of the PowerPoint. We'll come back, um, we'll come back uh, to that here in just a moment. So let's just escape that. All right, so now we're looking at Remedy Force. Um, so the intent here is not to be a full product demonstration. We want to focus on some specific things that you can utilize within the application to improve your change process. So right off the bat, we're looking here at Remedy Force uh, on the Change tab, and we're actually seeing um, a view that, um, that, that illustrates this is actually a default view, but understand that you have the ability to customize and create your own views. So if you're looking for, for example, all the changes related to telephony or related to uh, the desktop, uh, desktop uh, team or an applications team, you can configure these views to uh, present data that's relevant to you and to your group. Um, so specifically, I want to show you a change, and let's just I'm, I'm, to save time. I'm not going to create that change record. It's already been created, but let's just kind of talk through it and talk about some of the capabilities that we have. So one, as we look at this change record, a couple of things to note. Um, 
one of which is, um, as, as we look at this, you can see that it was registered utilizing a template. Now, I'm going to come back to that here in a moment, but the templates certainly will help you standardize changes that are common and repetitive in your environment. So we can talk about um, application upgrades, if we're talking about um, you know, upgrades to um, websites, things of that nature, those might be considered change. And, and really what a standard change would be is anything that is, again, um, somewhat repetitive um, in the sense that you know, we've done this before, the risk is minimal, and we're confident that this type of change can be executed uh, successfully. And in addition to that, this is a, a standard change should be any change that is, is, um, has been pre-approved by the service owner. So the service owner um, is, is comfortable with this and is something that has been predefined um, beforehand. So this particular change was registered utilizing the standard email change. Okay, uh, a couple of other things to note here um, in terms of scheduled start and end dates. This is especially useful when we start talking about our change schedule, allowing us to see what changes um, are occurring simultaneously. So here we can see that there are a couple of changes that would be happening at the same time. And by floating over these items, we can see a brief synopsis of each of these. Okay, so this is useful uh, because the last thing that we would want is to have multiple changes occurring at the same time that are essentially colliding with each other or uh, reducing the success factor for e either one of those changes. So again, seeing changes in a, from a calendar view and having the ability to scroll through those, um, that, that is uh, something that you certainly want to make, make use of. Again, scrolling down the change form here, a couple of other things to note, um, one of which is <clears throat> you'll notice that we are making use of the approval engine. So for, for customers that maybe have come from other products where they didn't have a formal approval engine, I think this is certainly one of the uh, significant um, features in the product because this allows me to predefine my approval process. So as I look here, um, as an example, let's go back to the approval list. So I only have I have a single approval for change records or change request, but certainly I can have multiple approval processes. And with the approval engine, this gives me the ability to identify criteria as to what change records will enter or bypass a particular approval process. And in this case, um, the entry criteria is nothing. So being that I only have a single change, um, single change approval process, that makes sense. I want all of my changes to go through this process. But there's no reason that I can't Edit, make edits to this and define entry criteria such as related to specific services, related to the category, based upon impact. These are all things that we can evaluate to determine whether the change will enter that approval process or not. Okay. Um, in addition to the criteria for entering that approval process, we also have the ability to create m one or multiple approval steps or le levels of approval in that process. So in this case, we have a, just a single level of approval, but uh, we might want to you know, go through an IT manager, then a business manager, and then have a final approval through the CIO, something to that effect. And, and that type of uh, detailed approval process um, can be defined within Remedy Force. And certainly this is all available through the user interface, but also you'll notice here um, through email, we have the ability to get individuals' approvals as well. So. Um, Enough about approvals. Another thing that, that I'd like to, to, to illustrate is the fact that here we have multiple tasks that are associated 
with this particular chain.